Hello everyone and welcome back to Banjo-Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. I am one well sheep yet again and today ladies and gentlemen we're going to take on the first world of the game. And honestly this is the perfect introduction world to get you used to the game mechanics, get you used to the controls and get you used to basically what you're really going to be doing throughout the majority of this quest. And to start things off we are introduced to a couple of brand new items from the get-go, including, first off, the, from I'm going to talk about these in order we picked them up, the Mumbo Skulls. Now these are objects that we need to get collect for a certain character called Mumbo Jumbo. And this character will basically be a way, it's, he's a way to unlock certain new gameplay features later down the line. He's basically, he basically transforms us into different animals that we can use to do certain tasks and obtain new items and whatnot throughout the game. Then we also have the Jinjos and basically what those Jinjos are, they're, they're five bit creatures? I don't know what they're meant to be but they're five creatures that are scattered throughout every world. Collect all five Jinjos in each world and you'll get yourself an extra Jiggy. And of course we also have another of the main MacGuffins to pick up which are the notes. And what those notes do is they open up doorways throughout the castle and there's a hundred of them in every single world. I'm going to be collecting every single one of those, so don't fret if you're looking for a guide where to find them. But you'll generally find that they point you in the right direction where to go. Anyway, you might be wondering when, to, how I managed to get this jiggy by here. This giant monkey up here, Conga, will be throwing oranges at you and there's a bunch of buttons on the ground. Basically stand on those buttons and Conga will throw the orange on said button while you're standing on it. Move out the way in time, get all the switches blown up by the oranges and you'll get yourself a jiggy. And then we can steal one of his oranges from his tree, allowing us to progress even on further on and getting another jiggy up by here. So yeah, we're going to see a lot of progression really quick in this uh, this game and we're about to be introduced into the first of the many power-ups that we can get to our main duo. This is the ability to learn the eggs. So you might notice these eggs popping around when you when you grab items for the first time, like I said, they'll expl the items themselves will explain how what they work, what their purpose is. And honestly, I love that because you can pick up items throughout the levels and honestly, it doesn't get in your face, it doesn't get too distracting or too annoying. Like for example, you pick up an egg for the first time or a note and it tells you, I'm a note, I'm an egg. And with the eggs, it just says, go to bottles and you will learn how to use us. And the notes will explain their purpose as well. And I really like that because it isn't too distracting, it isn't too in your face. It doesn't stop your gameplay, you know? But anyway, talking to bottles there, we gain access to the first of the powers we can use. So just hold down the Z button and press the C button up and you'll be able to shoot an egg out of Kasui's mouth. You can press C back as well to shoot it out of her ass and you shit the egg out, which sounds extremely painful. <laughs> and there's, there's, I think there's like one instance where we're gonna be doing that throughout this game. But uh, essentially what we need to do is shoot the eggs at this monkey by here in, you know, Conga, until she dies. Yes, it is a she, I believe, because I think, I think her model, yeah, it is a she, I think, because it has, looks like it has lipstick on that thing there. I think. <laughs> I can never tell. I mean, it's, it's a giant monkey. It doesn't really matter its gender, does it? Just just shoot eggs at its face until it gives you the jiggy. And uh, yeah, needless to say, all the jiggies you're going to get in this first world are going to be fairly simple things to deal with. And uh, that honey hive thing back here, when you break it open, it'll usually split out into three honeycomb pieces. Now, honeycomb pieces are basically, not honeycomb pieces, honey pieces. They're different from honeycombs because honeycombs increase your overall health. These things will actually recover health that you've lost from getting hit. Like say if I walk into that giant ant or termite enemy that was standing by there, I would go hurt so the honey would heal me and I'd be able to move on my merry may, merry way, merry way, merry way, merry may. <laughs> But um, I think this is, this world has the most power-ups you can collect out of any of the worlds, to be honest, because it's still it's giving you news to the main game, and the most useful moves that you'll be getting in this game are probably going to be collected in this world, now that I think about it. Like, now we got the ability to use the Talon Trot, which is an ability that we use in order to go up very steep slopes and whatnot. So, basically, you press the Z button down and press the D-pad, the C button, left, I think, I get them mixed up, 
it's like muscle memory. When I play the game, I know straight off, but I think it's left. And um, you'll be able to go into this little running cycle thing, which increases your overall speed and you can go up steeper slopes. Bombs your uncle. It's very useful. I don't like using it too much, however, because, well, when you're doing this, Kazooie makes this obnoxious noise, so, uh, yeah. I'm clearly a godlike voice actor for that, you know. <laughs> but uh, I digress. Anyway, coming on up to you, you see that giant skull head? Well, that is basically where Mumble Jumble, the character that I mentioned earlier, is going to be residing. And he's not in every single world of this game. He's going to be in. Uh, he's going to be in the majority of the levels, I believe. But he's not in every single one. So you don't need to worry about searching out for a skull every single chance you get. Which honestly is a good thing, because, uh, you know, otherwise it'll just add a lot of extra padding and finding tons and tons of things in this game. But uh, now we've got the ability to shoot a ground pound attack downwards. So basically jump and then press the Z button and you just slam into the ground. Which is basically required in order to break open these tents. Tents? These huts. Huts? Sheds? I'm going to call them sheds, because I'm actually not entirely sure what they really are. And uh, each, there's going to be a couple of things inside all these, so just be sure to pop them all open. So for example, we won't be able to get a go without exploding this property here. I'm pretty sure Mumbo's going to be a bit saddened that we're destroying all of his property. At least I'm assuming this is Mumbo's property. The level is called Mumbo's Mountain, so... Why does he help us? We're terrorizing his homeland. <laughs> but I digress. Anyway, what you want to do by here is go over to this giant Mumbo totem pole, or Mumbo's totem pole, and Mumbo is a bit of a neglecting pet owner, you know, because this is Mumbo's pet, and he's refusing to feed this thing. So what you're going to need to do is shoot eggs into its mouth to feed it until it gets to its last head. When we get to its last head, what we're going to want to do then is simply jump on top of the head and grab hold of the honeycomb piece, so... Yay, I guess. Yay. But anyway, now that we've gotten a hold of that, Jiggy for feeding Mumbo's very neglected pet, just go underneath these staircases by you to get another Mumbo token. And before going into Mumbo's hut by you, obviously jump into his eye, because, you know, extra Jiggies, you know. Jiggies are really easy to get hold of in this world. They're gonna get, they're gonna increase in difficulty throughout the rest of the game, you know, folks. But as you can see by that sign, we need five Mumbo tokens in order to access Mumbo's abilities to transform us. Cause he's not a free service, ladies and gentlemen. You know, people got to make the monies, and you know, charities. Charity's no good. Even if you're trying to overthrow an evil Gruntilda, green, rhyming. Which you know, money's the main thing for these people. <laughs> well, am I talking about? But anyway, mumbled mumble by here is actually voiced by Grant Kirkhope, and even though I, whenever I'm playing this game, for the most part, I'm speeding up the the speech that the the main characters are doing by holding down the A button. You can you can hear this is Grant Kirkhope's voice. You know, he he basically got loads of different loads of different um samples of his own voice and the game picks each of these samples at random whenever these mumbo's talking so it's, it's pretty cool up for the most part it comes out as uh somewhat can hear its sentences i suppose <laughs> i guess most of like most of most of the speech in this game is literally just vocal noises like if i was going to have a character in this game for example the character would probably sound like you know <laughs> Uh, someone needs to hire me for uh, the ukulele, ukulele games, but I digress. Anyway, let's just continue moving onwards through this world, and uh, yeah, you might wonder, where have we got to go next? We're running out of areas, are we not? Well, we still got loads of collectibles on this mountain site over yonder by here, you know, folks, but... Now that we got the ground pound ability, let's go over and meet our old friend Conga by here, because... There's, an, there's a specific item, well not even an item, there's a specific thing that are in every single level of the game that I sort of ignored a minute ago. And also we need the last Mumbo token which is here anyway, so. This here is a Gruntilda switch. Boop it with your ground pound beak attack, and somewhere in Gruntilda's fortress, castle, location, lair thingy. 
one of those words describes it perfectly, is well, a Jaguar spawns somewhere in that area. So just look out for these switches in every level, and just uh, just remember where the Jiggy spawns, and it'll help out greatly in your quest. You know, folks. Seriously, this is a game based around exploring, so uh, just keep looking at those nooks and crannies, you know, ladies and gentlemen, and keep an eye out for the notes. The, honestly, looking out for these notes really do help, because they do point you in the right directions for a lot of um, collectibles and what have you. And not to mention, you do need to collect them anyway to progress through the last, so... Uh, gotta get a collecting on, folks! Collecting is part of the game. It's the main deal. Which actually brings me up to one of the more... One of my complaints about this game, actually, and it's not many complaints I have. Like, every, the gameplay is solid overall and what have you, but... This is more of a limitation of the Nintendo 64 than anything, and you're gonna see me rant about it probably in the next part, because the next world has this... The next world is the worst with this particular complaint, because... Due to the way the hardware of the N64, everything's... You know, it's not perfect, you know, folks, the hard N64 hardware is quite old. So, you're gonna have a lot of issues where things are gonna pop in and not show up from miles away, so... Looking out for a lot of collectibles in this game can be quite tricky because they just not showing up on screen until you get close to them. Now, that's not a deal, in this, that's not really any issue in this world whatsoever because this is the smallest world on the game. It's very perfect for a simple. It's perfect for a simple introduction, you know, folks. But the second world onwards are going to get larger in scope and. It's just a pre warning. But anyway, the first transformation we get transformed into is a termite, uh, a very small one at that. And whenever we are in termite small form, well, the these termites just sort of treat us like we're one of their own and sort of chat to us as we're walking by. Of course, us being the rude fuckers we are, we're just gonna skip on by going, haha, screw you, are a Mel Gear. But uh, yeah, it also allows us to access this area up here because the termite special ability is the ability to climb up ridiculously steep slopes like this one by here. So yeah, you need the termite ability to tr progress. Otherwise, good luck. And um, this isn't the last we're going to see the termite right now because even though this is the very final jiggy that's left in this world. We're gonna need to use this transformation in the overworld, folks, the in Gruntilda's lair, because these transformations can be carried over into the main castle. But we're not gonna see many in the main castle, just because the main castle of the game in Grunty's lair, after a certain distance away from the world you transform into, you will, you know, your, the magic power that Mumbo bestows upon you will run out. So, you can't really run around the castle as a tiny termite. As fun as that would be, you can't really do that. However, later down the line you will see me transform into new creatures that will have specific areas dedicated to them in Grunty's castle. And if you go to those areas in, in your transformed state, you will not be forced to transform back until, well, you get too far away of both the world and that area. So, that's kind of a neat little thing to make note of, and we'll be using that to find a couple of collectibles that I don't want to spoil right away this earlier on in the playthrough, you know? But, um, yeah, now that we've done that, just jump on up here using a termite. You can't get up here as normal Banjo Kazooie and get the second Jiggy of Gruntilda's Lair. Now, Gruntilda's Lair and Castle is treated as if it's a, its own, you know, world. So, there are 10 Jiggies in this entire lair as well, you know, folks? But of course, like I said, you get too far away from the world and the magic power will start getting weak and you start transforming back into the good old Baron Bird, you know, folks? Also, I love the fact that these two characters are named after musical instruments. You know, you have Banjo the Bear, who's obviously named after a banjo, and then there's Kazooie, who's named after the Kazoo. I don't know, it's a neat little play on words, I guess. Is that really class of the play on words? I don't know, but I, I like it, you know, I like it. But of course, we do need to go in that first world and collect at least 50 notes in order to move on with the castle, because obviously we need 50 notes to get through the store, as you can clearly read. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you guys can read, can't you? Of course, you guys could be listening to me as like a podcast sort of deal right now, but uh, I don't know what you guys are doing, you know. <laughs> but with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this part. 
So thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people, and I'll catch you all next time where we take on the second world of the game, the Treasure Trove Cove. One of my favorite worlds as well. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. I'll catch you all next time. Bye!